Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. On this episode, we're going to talk with the queen of possibility, Jessica Cox, and how we can all live in the space and from the story of possibility. But before we jump in, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join my community, you can do that by joining my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you like what you see here, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Jessica, thank you so much for being on Chair Chats today. I uh, introduced you as the queen of possibility because when I looked you up and I looked at your website, possibility was the word that stood out to me in almost everything that you've accomplished in your life. And so I thought about possibility and how I resonate with that word so much because I feel like people look at us and they have very low expectations of what we can do. Um, and um, then we're able to do something. Like for me, maybe it's riding and driving a car. For you, it's flying a plane, you know, <laughs> tomato, tomato. But people look at us and they're like, wow, I had no idea that was possible. And so what I love about the idea of possibility is that it inspires people to think bigger than what they previously had thought about before. I wanted to talk with you about possibility and we can start with letting our audience get to know you a bit um, and what you've achieved in your life. Okay, well, um, thank you for inviting me to be on your show. It's been, I really kind of felt like I found a sister when I got to know you after your email when you wanted to reach out. So I, like yourself, was born without arms um, and my challenges were, I'll just take it to the more social aspect of being different. Some of the internal battles, aside from the physical obvious, um, I think some of those impossibilities were, um, some of the things that I guess I would have never known that I could be up on a stage and speak my life in front of thousands of people. Um, especially considered how withdrawn and shy I was growing up and self-conscious that I was. So I think I'll take it to that level because just this morning I did an interview about the aspect of flying an airplane. While that's incredible, we, we also have some of those um, more uh, internal challenges of insecurities and the aspects that we, we don't always, uh, maybe people can't always see. I'd like to talk about that and how that was an impossibility for me, um, being outgoing and confident about my difference. Mm, yes, yes. Let's go there because I think the outside stuff that we experience and are a result of what we see um, is just a reflection of what we believe is possible on the inside, right? It's just in a manifestation mm -hmm of what's possible on the inside for us. So yes, I believe possibility starts within too. So yeah, let's go there. Well, I will have to start at the beginning because uh, being here and obviously sharing my story with you, I've done this now for, wow, maybe 20 years. And uh, at the beginning, it wasn't always easy to talk about my difference and talk about the, the internal challenges of being so insecure and being so self-conscious about my difference. But it was definitely, uh, there was definitely a beginning and I guess I could start there just sharing a little bit about how as a kid, I used to do things to um, avoid, basically I, I used to be self-conscious and I would do things to avoid being stared at, like maybe having a sweater draped over my shoulders so that you couldn't see the empty sleeves or do things so that I could blend in with the crowd and um, that was who I was. I was very self-conscious. I didn't have the confidence to say this is me. 
I'm born without arms and, and, you know, take it or leave it. But um, I, I'm very happy to say now that even if I go in public and not everyone is okay with my difference, no doubt about it, I use my feet to eat. And there are some people that have fear of feet <laughs> and they're going to be uncomfortable in front of me if I'm even in a restaurant eating with my feet. But I can go through that kind of encounter of someone who's uncomfortable and say, you know what, it's okay that you're uncomfortable. But, you know, my job is not to make the whole world comfortable. My job is just to be the best person, best version of myself. And I feel proud to be able to, to get to that, to have got to that point when I used to be so obsessed as a child over what I thought, what everyone else thought. That's amazing. And, you know, it's so interesting you say that because I was having a conversation with the, the other day with somebody about how I take that on. Like as a person with a disability, I know that my sheer presence makes people uncomfortable and I take it on to, to help them be a little more comfortable you know, and you're right. It's, it's not my job, but to, but other than to be the best person or best version of myself. So thank you for that. I think that in itself is so enlightening. Can I ask how you got to that point from, from scared or not sure about how to embrace your difference to confident? Okay. Well, it, as I mentioned before, it was a long journey to get there. And um, I want to point on, just make a point of one thing that you were saying, how sometimes we feel obligated that it's our responsibility to make other people feel comfortable, but it's not our responsibility. Uh, if they're uncomfortable, that's their thing. And uh, I think releasing that, that feeling, that, um, uh, th that responsibility that we feel like we have, I think releasing that frees us and in so many ways, it frees us to leave that space for other things that we can do and our energies can be directed towards. Um, and now you're going back to your other question about, you know, what was it like uh, and what was it that helped me get to where I am? And I think it wasn't just one thing. It was a series of things. And for me, I want to point out some of the things that I did probably uniquely in my life um, is that I early on when I really didn't have a say at what I did or what activities I was a part of because I didn't know what I liked or I didn't, well, I mean, I, did, I wasn't that strong of a personality. Like some three-year-olds, they know what they like. Like my niece, she talks like she's 30. She knows what she wants to do. She has a very strong opinion about things. Mm -hmm. She's only three, but I wasn't that type of child. So I was almost like, okay, my mom would give me these activities that she'd put me in. She'd put me in dance. She'd put me in um, Taekwondo classes. And for me, when I was able to do something that I didn't think I could do, maybe it was get my yellow belt, which is the first belt in Taekwondo. It gave me the spark of confidence that gave me the empowerment that I needed to be a better version of myself. So for me, I kind of bounced from activity to activity and absorbing more confidence with each new achievement. And even as an adult now, I, I'm like constantly like, I got to do something new now because I got to stretch myself. I got to grow. And I'm looking for something new to do because um, stagnation, you know, doesn't serve us in many, in any way, really. So I'm constantly growing. And I think for me, that zest to do something, to achieve something gave me the byproduct of once I achieved it, I was able to feel this empowerment and that kind of built on itself after many different things that I did, many different achievements, maybe some that I didn't always succeed at. I mean, I don't play guitar, but I did take a guitar class and I tried it. Um, but, you know, as long as you don't see it as failure, you just see it as I learned something new, then you can take something positive from it. And so eventually new things came. I did more things. And the ultimate thing for me was flying a plane. And the achievement of flying a plane on my own brought this profound amount of confidence that helped me to be a better version of myself. Gosh, there's so much in that because I feel like the just the ability or the desire to want to try something different and stretch yourself takes a lot of confidence because mm -hmm. you have to know that you're not going to look good right away because you're the amateur in the room. And that that takes a lot of courage. I, I would say more courage than confidence there. But 
really just to reiterate what you're saying, confidence is built upon action, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't sit by and wait for confidence to happen. And then once you have the confidence, you go out and do something. It's by doing something that you gain and grow your confidence, which is almost very counterintuitive. If you were talking to a viewer who is sitting there right now and is like, I, I just, I feel beat down by the world. I feel like I don't belong. Um, and I, 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 but I believe that there's potential within me because possibility starts with potential, right? It's the potential mm -hmm. to make something happen. Um, and so, um, and they just don't know where to start. What kind of guidance would you offer them? Well, I just want to say for um, someone who is struggling with that, this, it really starts with baby steps. And it doesn't have to be anything profound like flying an airplane or practicing Taekwondo. It could be as simple as, you know, I've never made banana pudding before. I know I'm going to make a mess, but I'm going to go in the kitchen and I'm going to have the courage. So there you go. I guess it takes that courage, right? To say, okay, I'm going to be vulnerable here because I'm not a pro at this, but I'm going to have the courage to be vulnerable and I'm going to go and try something new. It may come out disastrous. I might have to throw the whole thing away, but I'm going to try it and being willing to try You'd be surprised how you can grow just by starting with that little, little bit of willingness to try. Yeah. Banana pudding. Now I feel like banana pudding. <laughs> I made it the other day for the first time. Oh my goodness. I never used to be a real fan of banana stuff, but it was good. It was yeah. Good. Did you make a mess? You know what I did? The first thing I did is I've never really used a um, blender or <laughs> one of those big mixers. So I was wearing this nice outfit with like, you know, black pants and a nice floral shirt. And then I turned on the blender and all this like banana pudding stuff went all over my black pants and they were my favorite pants. So those things are going to happen. You know, I just threw the clothes in the wash. It's okay. Um, but in the end, that end product, though I got messy, I messed up the kitchen. It tasted amazing. And I was able to share it with other people. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier, the more we as, as individuals step up out of our comfort zone to make something possible, we expand other people's views of what's possible, right? Like you, like when I go out in public and I'm driving, people have to like take a second look and they're like, what? And then they're like giving me a thumbs up, they're amazed, or um, someone will come up to me in Target and they'll say, um, you know, my, my brother has a disability and I saw you driving, can I check it out and see if this is something that he could do? And, you know, so I love that when we make things happen, we think it's just for us, but it's not. It's for mm -hmm. so many other people that we don't know and we think we're just going about our life. I remember, back I think 2013 the goal cast or you know that was like the big news like armless pilot and like so how was you know taking that and it, it, that is a big thing like, like you said no one has to start there but um it, you know what made you decide to want to fly a plane or or do anything how do you decide what you want to do next well uh, you know it really I am a very spontaneous person, um, all, you know, physical differences aside, I think that's just my personality. I cannot do the same thing over and over without getting totally bored. Um, so I, I like to have spontaneous, that's why I'm an entrepreneur is because I have to have the spontaneity in my life, you know, um, and I think for me, it's just whatever crosses my path uh, and it's being open to receiving those opportunities because everyone has something that crosses their path, but whether or not we're open to it, you know, um, that's on the individual. And that means if I leave myself open, then anything across my path, whether it's someone has an extra skateboard and they want to give me the skateboard and I'm like, oh, well, maybe I should try skateboarding or, or something that's, you know, random. Um, like I'm not much of a knitter and my sister-in-law is really big on knitting. Um, it's just really being open to it, I think. And that's what determines what comes my way is I just leave myself open. And then when something crosses my path, 
because there are countless things out there to do. And it might maybe it might be of interest to me that I'll try it and say, okay, this is the next thing to do. Um, have you ever had anything that you've tried to ha get or do and could not make it possible? I brought up guitar lessons uh, earlier. So I was in college um, and uh, I was living in the dorms trying to figure out how I could get that last credit I needed to graduate, which required some kind of music or art credit or something. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to go. And I always wondered about, wondered about guitar, uh, guitar lessons. And there was a guitar course that I could take. So I had it all figured out. I even had someone who literally drove me in a golf cart from my dormitory to the music building in order for me to be able to carry that guitar because the guitar is pretty darn heavy. And most people, yeah, they could use their arms to just carry it all the way to, to the class. But for me, it was going to be a lot of tension on my neck to carry that. So I got, I got a ride all figured out. I got to class and I took this course and started figuring out some of these, I guess you call them the strings that you have to reach to be able to play the guitar. And it was just all getting difficult because I knew that it was going to have to be modifying the strings because the length of my toes are a lot shorter than the length of fingers. So modifying all of the strings was going to be a process. And I just didn't have the time being in college, trying to graduate. And I decided, okay, well, I'm just going to take this and um, I think I'm going to move on, get the credit I needed and I need to move on to something else. And how did you deal with the disappointment of not being able to play the guitar? Um, well, let me also bring up another challenge and that's still tying my hair in a ponytail. You see my hair is in a nice, beautiful bun right now. I mean, yes, it's like, it is so there's beautiful. a single strand of hair sticking out, right? Yeah. It's like not even a messy bun. It's a nice, tight, like ballerina bun. Yeah. And that's all credit to my husband. But when we first started dating, he was pretty bad at it, but it was better than me. So I struggled really hard for years as someone with long hair to attempt to put my hair in a ponytail with my feet. And then finally, um, Patrick came in my life and he learned how to, he got better in a very short span of time. And I'm still struggling to tie my hair up by myself. And some days it's really frustrating. And some days I just have to figure out a way around it by wearing like a headband or do something to pull my hair back. Like, I don't know if you know those hair, like the towels you can wear around your head and just some way to get the hair off my neck because it's just so annoying sometimes. I know, why not just cut my hair? Well, if I cut my hair short, then that means styling my hair every single day. So I personally think having longer hair is easier. <laughs> um, so that was still a frustrating thing for me. Someone who chooses to have long hair and I live in a place where it's 105 degrees Fahrenheit here in Tucson and going outside with long hair on your neck and shoulders, it's hot. Well, I mean, side note, I'd love for your husband to give my husband some lessons on hair. <laughs> <laughs> Has he tried? Yes, yes. No, he throws my hair up. He said the other day, um, I, I he did my hair differently and like in a bun, like a twisty bun thing. I don't know if he'd ever get it like that. Your, your kudos to your husband. But he did a twisty bun thing. I'm like, oh, oh, that's new. What'd you do? Like, how did you learn that? He's like, I watched a YouTube video. Oh, <laughs> I mean, the fact that they, you know, care to even re like research it and look it, that that says a lot and says volumes about them. And the, the people that are maybe feeling like, well, I really, really tried for this job or I really, really tried for this um, for this business. Or I really, really tried in this relationship and it failed. Mm hmm. Like, OK, yeah, yeah. that's something we all have to learn to deal with because you know I mean I don't know many people who've had everything I don't think of anyone who has had everything go right um I remember applying for a job at one point before my entrepreneurship obviously I applied and I really wanted it and I worked really hard to get it and I didn't get the job since you brought up that example um but I think back at it now and I'm like well maybe it was for a reason because now I'm here in this wonderful space of entrepreneurship and doing something that I couldn't do if I had a regular job. So I think it's, it's really about really shifting the perspective 
again, not seeing it as failure, just saying, well, maybe this just wasn't meant to be. Maybe there's other things out there that I needed to leave space for. I'm being open to the positive in that. What's next for Jessica Cox? So you, you, I feel like you've done a lot in your life and um, you've been doing the motivational speaking for quite a, quite a while now. Um, what's next for you uh, to help stretch you? Well, you know, um, I mean, there are a couple other things that have been possibilities for me. I mean, I talked with you personally, and I think we can share that a little with your viewers is, you know, is motherhood something to consider? And being everything that I've done in my life, I don't know why it feels like it's so built up in my head as being this huge, tremendous thing. Um, and that's something where I'm vulnerable. I'll be vulnerable with you on that is that you call me queen of possibility. And here I'm having some of these apprehensions and fears of, you know, how am I going to be able to balance my career and being a mom and these things that many young women think about. And then, you know, I have a biological clock and, and then how am I going to get over my fear of needles? <laughs> yes. And, you know, all these things that like, I'm a human being too. I mean, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not fear, fear proof and, and I, I talk about being fearless, but we all still have things we have to work on. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of possibilities out there. Right now, I'm really enjoying my new goal of coaching. And I've enjoyed taking people on a new one-on-one -on -one intimate level of helping them with breakthroughs because I haven't been able to witness that. I've been speaking on stage for 14 years in 27 countries. And when I speak, I speak to thousands of people and I get off stage and I have this wonderful like high of I've just inspired these people but it's never really that one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship that you can have with a coaching person and when you coach someone that's amazing so if someone wanted to work with you one-on-one -on -one, what yes yeah what would like how would they do that because maybe they're hearing what you're saying and they're really resonating with your personality and your experience and your compassion the fact that you said I'm not fearless. None of us are fearless. I don't think it's possible that we get rid of fear completely. And that's where courage steps in, right? And it's important to have people around us who can coach us and hold us accountable and champion us and say, I believe in you, you know, and, and here's how I can help you get over that hump. So we can go from fearful to courage. Um, mm -hmm. So how would they get to work with you? Well, thank you for the opportunity to share my website, which is possiblethinking.com. And people can go onto that website and find out more. Just possiblethinking.com to help people shift from impossible thinking to possible thinking. Perfect. And I know there's positive, there's positive thinking, but my take is possible thinking. Yes. Do you want to make that distinction? What do you think is the distinction between positive and possible? Positive is definitely, um, I mean, there obviously there's, there's some connections there. Um, when I think of possible thinking, it's just everything that I'm about. It's about saying, you know, hey, there's a challenge out there and I'm going to just break this challenge up into doable baby steps. It's about breaking something up to make it less intimidating. It's making it possible, seeing the possible in it. Um, you know, positive is obviously just keeping that positive mindset. So um, I'm, I'm really developing. This is a fairly new brand for me, but I think it's important because it goes with achieve the impossible. And everyone has their own version of impossible. Maybe it's baking a cake. It doesn't have to be, like I mentioned before, something profound like flying an airplane. <laughs> it can be like, um, I want to thread I want to sew this uh, little, you know, learn how to sew or something like that. Um, so I want to help people achieve their own impossible through possible thinking. Wow. And guys, I didn't even know that was the name of that website, possible thinking. So I am so glad that that's when I see you and I read about you, that's the word that comes forth um, to me. And so how appropriate possible thinking.com. Um, go there if you're interested in learning more about how to work one-on-one -on -one with Jessica. Um, are there any final words you want to share with our audience before we close this down? I just want to thank you and what you're doing because I have this, in, like, 
inspired, I feel inspired and moved by you as well. And the fact that you did so well, inter I mean, interviewing and the fact that you're sharing this with people to help them with their lives. I really am happy to be a part of this and happy to have you as my newest friend. And I don't know if you told the audience all our commonalities before we got, I got on, but I thought it was so neat to find someone who has all these things in common. And now I need to go meet you when I'm in Hawaii next. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So Jessica and I, not only do we not both not have arms, but we're both half Filipino and half Caucasian. And um, your mom was Filipino too, right? It was your mom. Yes. Yep, it uh -huh. was my mom. Um, and so, and we're both married to Caucasian men. <laughs> Wait, what's your what's your wedding anniversary? May twelfth. Okay, all right. Yeah. I'm in July. <laughs> okay, there's something different there. <laughs> well, so we got to share. That's cool. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, and um, you know, I'm sure as we get, we become um, and fortify our friendship, we'll learn more and more about how we're similar and how we're different and how we can complement each other. Um, and so Jessica, I also want to thank you for showing up. You said in the beginning that as a three-year-old or as a young person, you were shy, you were not confident, um, you were embarrassed almost by your body. And um, I'm so glad that you, for whatever happened, you were able to step out of that and embrace your difference and let go of this like, it's not my responsibility to make other people comfortable. I'm only responsible for being the best version of myself and making what I want possible in the world. And because of that, you've been able to speak to thousands and thousands of people in 14 different countries. And so um, I'm sure that your light has spread around the globe, too. Um, and now with this episode, we'll be able to share you um, in a way that's evergreen. So thank you so much. I want to hear from you, our viewer, what, what is it that you thought was once impossible that then was made possible? Maybe it wasn't something you did, but something you observed or saw from afar. So I'd love for you to comment below. And if you haven't already, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join my community, you can do that on my private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you like what you see, please support us at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed.